we first, when Miss McIver first started showing us the song, I walked in the class and she was dressed up like a superhero. She had this whole video put up on the board, and then everybody was like, "Wait, what?" And then during math class, um, she like started putting on the slideshow and started singing and dancing around the room, and she was just like, "Ah!" <laughs> dancing in, around the room because we were all having trouble with exponents. They were doing it wrong because they got confused by multiplying the base number by the exponent. Like the exponent would be 2 and the base number would be 10 and they would do 10 times 2 and they would get 20. But instead it should be 100 because 10 times 10. And that really kind of threw them off. I teach 5th grade science and math and every year I generally focus on one particular mathematical skill or procedure that the students really have a challenging time with. And this year, it happened to be finding the value of exponents. And that's not unusual for any fifth grader to have that challenge. I, my gosh, I was at a seminar where they said that even high school students were just having the biggest challenge remembering how to find the value of an exponent number legitimately. So with that, I'm like, you know, of all songs to address or concepts to address, let it be this one and let me write a song about it. So with that, I wrote a song called The Power of Me. It's written from the exponent's point of view uh, to really describe how to find the value of an exponent number. Thankfully, thankfully, it worked and it really clicked with the students. I think the song worked because some of the lyrics said multiply the base by the base as many times the power states. Mm -hmm. because. The power is referring to the exponent, which means, and the base number is multiplied by the ex, like not directly, but it's multiplied the base by itself as many times the exponent. And I think that really worked because the lyrics basically made it sound a little bit better and easier to understand. I think it helped the children that did it that don't know how to do the exponent, as Dylan said, how to multiply the base as many times the power states. It um, should have helped them because we, our class had a hard time with that. As Dylan stated, it, like, it, like it said, 10 to the power of 2, they did 10 times 2, it was 20, but it was 10 times 10. After they learned the song, I noticed that their minds started to click and they were doing the, the problems with the exponents correctly. And I think, I was thinking to myself, wow, the music worked. Mm -hmm. So. That actually was kind of cool. At the beginning of the year, when we started learning exponents, I didn't really get it. And like what Dylan said, I would always do the base times the exponent and then get the answer. But once we started making the song and I started practicing to it, and like the first night after I did it and I was listening to it, I'm actually like, oh, that's what you do. The whole music video started when I brought in a couple YouTube videos of me playing drums at my drum shows. Mm -hmm. And then Miss McIver, once she saw what I could do, she found out that maybe since last year she did a video, maybe this year we could do one with drums and stuff. And then the next couple days, Dylan brought in his cards. Yeah, um, so basically I brought in my cards. I tried to show that I could actually shuffle and do couple of card tricks that I knew that could probably help out in the music video. The students this year were really, really super excited about doing a music video with me. I'd done one last year and oh my gosh, did they want to do a music video. And so the exponent song, The Power of Me, that just seemed like the, the perfect song uh, based on the talent that I had. Once we decided to actually do the music video, then the students began submitting various audition videos, etc., with the instruments that they play and what particular talents that they had that they wanted to showcase in the video. So with that, once we decided on all the different parts that needed to be included in this song, I set about writing a musical score for nine separate pieces, believe it or not, uh, to create the final version of the song. The only part I did not write was the drum part, and that's because I really felt that my drummer could rise to the challenge of writing his very own, and then we could work together to perhaps polish here and there just a few of the parts that, that he may have created. So once the song was officially written, I had all the orchestral parts, etc., the 
kids were so excited they didn't want to wait till May, which is usually when I would start a, a video project, is after all the high stakes testing. They wanted to start immediately, and so that basically meant in January of the year, and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I finally compromised and went with February, and that's when I would host my math music club after school. I decided this year to really approach this music video from an authentic project-based learning experience for the students. And what I wanted to do really was to have them have an experience where they could literally be hands-on for every single part of video production, and not just the auditioning part, but going all the way through uh, budget, acquisitions, graphic design, set design, engineering, everything that encompasses building a set, creating a set, designing all the props and the costumes and everything that goes with it, well, that was going to be their job. And so what a better way to incorporate STEAM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, the Arts, and math. So with that I, I did incorporate 16 separate state standards that encompass 14 STEAM design challenges and the students were divided into teams in order to take on all of these challenges. What are Newton's laws of motion to get this out? We, we can add a circular thing to the flash um, on the phone, and then it could make an actual, it could simulate an actual spotlight, like using only the phone and the circular thing. Well, we just came in today, and we think what happened was that the heat from the sun and also the buildup from the window openers caused the sticky paste and the tape to like pretty much melt, which will, which eventually led to it being on the ground because it won't hold up anymore. The tape was being melted because of the seat of the heat from the sun and the metal, and the mixture that makes it actually hold. Um, we had to figure out how how to not let that happen, but still make it stick to the wall. So to make sure it won't happen again, we're gonna put um, extra tape and um, make sure um, make sure it won't bend and fall off, or yeah, it would be a it would be a failure in the test. We put, the video. We'll put a double layer because if the sun gets due to the first one, there'll be a backup one so that the mixture won't get out. Okay, guys. Good job, you guys. High five. Oh. High five. Oh. And there's another Give it surprise. up for my engineers from solving that. Oh. Oh. What's happened with the design? Yeah, we did it wrong. Well, we've sure. got, because remember how we had to keep in mind the dancer's movement? and where the dancer's body would be. That's the science of this. Yeah, it was really difficult because um, right before we started, and um, Miss McIver's son, he was starting to set up the drums and everything, but then when he was tuning everything, he tried to play it, and he realized that the back of the dr bass drum wasn't there, so we had to get creative, and we took the portable curtains from the marionette dance scene, and we shoved them in the drum, the kick drum, and it kind of made it sound like there was an actual back to it. Um, Madeline was doing my, um, the eyeliner and I blinked and then it messed up and then we tried everything because it was waterproof and then you got Crisco and then it came off. We think the science is the oil because there's a lot of oil in this uh -huh. and makeup and makeup removers are like base from oil. So. so that's why you think it worked? Brandon, yes. Brandon. We don't need to worry about the exponent sign at this time. Yeah. The task was not the exponent sign. The task was, can you light the rest of the stage? Because, you see, this is the shadow effect I was talking about. Yeah, I see it. So, what was the most challenging part about being a lighting engineer? Uh, the most challenging part was was figuring out how to not blind people. So, we had to use a laser light and that was affecting some of the musicians and vocalist performance. So we had to find a way to not blind them, but to still have the effect of the laser light. So how did you problem solve that? Um, well, we problem solved that by, by, by changing some of the settings on the light, and maybe backing it up or scooting it up. 
so it, it would still have the effect, but it wouldn't increase or decrease the performance. Okay, friends, can I please get your voices off? Can you see Class? Yes. May I please get your voices off for just a few more seconds? This is oh, wait, I'm, looking, I'm looking at it, but I have to find a contact. Thanks from Walmart. This Oh, yeah, uh, that's, ask Brendan. He's like in charge of fabric, basically. All the people in the math music club to put on the back of the t-shirt. No, um, I am student we research because for our rag dolls, rag dolls and marionettes, we are we are doing makeup because our masks were too big. So we are finding a solution, and I just finished up finding eye pencil for for, for the eyeliner okay. and for the um. The blush. So I just finished up that, and then I have I have like a, a, a lipstick for the lips, obviously. Um, I have some face paint and some hair extensions. This is going to be one of my favorite scenes in the entire video. I'm so looking forward to this. Really as because uh, most of the most of the time you spend um, like doing the music, you were usually doing that, and so we got our hopes up. Uh, and then we, and then well, that's okay. Over. In the future, in the future, all you need to do is get an app that goes to 150 beats a minute. Well, all you have to do is get an app that's like a metronome or something like that. You do? Then all you do is you set it for... All you do is this. You just put it next to you, and you set it in place for 150 beats a minute. And then you go, boom, 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 right? And so it's all to the perfect beat of the music, and then you'll get used to working at exactly the precise speed that we're going to be playing. I created the exponent logo for the band, mm -hmm. and I thought of the idea by looking, going on the internet, and I found a lot of logos that had the X on the top, like it has here. What are you doing, Brendan? I am I am conducting research of what color backdrop should we have for a backdrop, and I'm proposing, I'm proposing the idea. What's your job? My job is I am in charge of backdrop and all of lighting and lighting design. The most challenging part about my research was how to find a good backdrop color that wouldn't stand out but it still had an effect on the video. So we chose a dark gray, because that was a nice a neutral color and it didn't stand out as much as some of the other color choices, like yellow or purple. So what I'm doing is um, designing and basically making a sketch of the table for the card game scene. And I'm making a sketch or drawing of what I think the card should look like. Right now we're making a practice chessboard so that me and Thomas can practice this. He's helping. We're making a quick sketch of the chessboard so we know exactly what we're going to do with it. And then we're going to get a real chessboard in the music. I'm working on the exponent blackjack sign that's going to be hanging up. The, um, we're going to use a like maybe a red um, border with some little lights on them and oh, cool. 3D black letters for the for exponent blackjack and maybe even put in some uh, um, some numbers in there. This is a two scale model of the entire room which we are turning into television. We have the key down here, every like square, yeah. like every yeah. two and feet, yeah. and uh, the card game area is basically, well, CGI. we'll describe this later. later. Someone else this this is incredible work, we and then... about pu putting the desks in, but it, it was just too, be too much work. Yeah, we, was kinda we decided to erase it. How early were you getting to school to work on this? Uh, anywhere from 7 to 7. Well, from 7.30 to 7. Yeah, as soon as, around. like, 
anybody else gets here, he's already here, like, John downloads on his, like, clipboard. Yeah. Yeah. Right here, actually. And this is your paper doll design. Yeah. Tell me about the other team that you're on. I am also on the paper doll team with um, Madeline. Uh-huh. And this is going to be 8 to the power of 6, and we might even expand it to, for the marionettes to hold. Um, well, we, we had to make it to where, sort of like paper dolls, well, basically paper dolls vault only in, at, at, in a eight times eight, like an eight and then a multiplication sign. And the first time we tried to do it, it turned out in diamonds instead of multiplication signs, which was, which was kind of difficult to find out which way to put, um, to do it, to cut it, because you have to cut it out. Mm -hmm. um, to where it'll actually um, come out, or because if you cut it wrong, then it'll all just be separate pieces of paper. And at first, they went really wrong, <laughs> like horribly wrong. <laughs> what did they look like? They looked like snowmen holding hands. <laughs> and so now, show me what you have now. Now we figured out to cut it to cut out the diamond or cut out the multiplication signs the other way to where it looks like eight times eight times eight times eight times eight times eight. This is this is just a model of it, but because we're gonna actually use stiffer paper to make it hold up easier and maybe put a few layers on top of each other. Out of the way of the engineering department because they're they're trying to build a facade backdrop for the next one of blackjack scene. Okay, and they're going to be flipping this, so please stay out of the way. Guys, 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 I see you had a big challenge flipping that. Yeah. So what have you learned from this? It's hard to flip it. Well, flipping that's... Flipping it is not the best idea. Yeah. You need a, I think I have a plan. Well, now, what did you say? I think I have a plan. Do you think a plan would have been helpful before yeah, we tried to flip? Yes. I, uh, I think what we should do is come up with a tactical idea or like a design on like a piece of paper. Okay. So like we did for the puppet controller challenge, we first designed it mm -hmm. and then we so we, get, we should think of a tactical plan. So Thomas, what's your plan? I'll go under while you guys are carrying it, and I'm and if you go under or something like what to do, and so and we'll take and the person will take it under okay. I have instead. Now, oh, that's good. So we can use this. We can use these guys. Okay. The way we work successfully as a team is it's one voice at a time. I have a and please, friends. You work one voice at a time, you work as a team, but that means you have to listen to each other. So Juan was speaking, do not interrupt Juan. Okay, friends? And you'll take turns speaking. What if four people lift it up at every corner, and then maybe two people here and So two people go under, and they tape it underwards, and then we can put it back down, and there will be tape. Two, two, one, go! So I have top lift it up. Oh, 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 me, Juan, and Thomas, and we had some help from other people. Mm -hmm. What we did is we cut the cardboard to the shape that would allow us to get to the sink and the um, water fountain while as well covering the wall so it doesn't look like so it doesn't look like an actual classroom and mm. it was pretty challenging because we had to figure out where to put the ruler the yardsticks on the back so i wouldn't bend over mm -hmm. and how to f make the safety stay yeah. Thanks. Uh, why don't we do some more? i feel like yeah. this is my last day of my Oh, wow. Whoa! And stop. I was assigned the measurements for facade with Juan, and both of us did the facade curtains, portable curtains, and the, one, the second window facade for the rock band. So 
are you guys doing? Okay, so what we're doing, we're doing the curtains for the facade. For the black jack scene. We did our first one over there, and now this is our second one. It's going to be like a curtain. A curtain that you see in the movie. And, uh, um, is the facade that can't have that. any light come in. Okay, so we have to tape it in Awesome work. job over there. Andrew, did you get footage? Of, oh, you're getting it right now. I have it. We're taking, no, we're taping it black so no light comes out. Okay. And um, it's a fake wall. It's gonna be a fake wall so the light doesn't come in. It's kind of like it, it's like tired, but it's just like it's right. Let's double tie. Yeah. Double tie. We were thinking since um the arms and the legs are pretty close together, we want to make these close together. And then just like this, because this will be the arms, this will be the leg, and it will be like this will be the right. It'd be more like this instead of going like, no, like this. It'll be like this. Right. Let me back up so I can see that. Say it again. Uh huh. Oh, I see. So. Okay. We made a specific decision about where we were going to place it because we realized, oh, there was a uh, 64 meter centimeters and 25 centimeters, so we automatically made measurements. We used to uh, oh, now that's good. That is awesome. From the from zero to seventy-five and from one hundred to seventy-five. Very good. I cannot wait to see this. We're going to be testing this soon. So we have our human marionette dancer here. Let's give it up. Okay. So now it is time to test the final designs of the uh, puppet controllers. And now we're going to come this way to Sebastian's team. Thank you, sir. And we've got, where are these supposed to go? These are our legs and these are our arms. Yeah. See, do you guys notice the difference when the string is not only accurately measured, but ac accurately cut? You guys have got to look at this. Look at this. Okay. Now we're going to see if it works. Start right. Okay, make sure there's tension in the strings. And left. Nice. Right. And left. And we have our winner! That was awesome! Yeah! We have the winning design. That was... I feel was... like I can punch a wall! <laughs> and I love how it's structurally reinforced on the top. You see this? Yeah! 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 That's a white feel! You see this? Yeah! 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 You see this? I'm going to Disney World! Much good. So basically what we're doing right now is putting on the stickers for the cards for the X1 and the Black Jack scene. And she's trying to... And she's cutting an 8 to try to make it look like a 3 because we don't have... So cutting an 8. This is... I love the choices that you've made. This is awesome. So we're putting Black Jack tape on... Four yards to make like two controllers for them for the um, mirroring that they used um, to make it look like the yardsticks. If you zoom in, it's automatically cut. Oh, this gorgeous sign! Oh, this sign is beautiful! There's like, there's like, there's like, there's like, there's like, I want to make this slightly like, bigger, like, but okay. Hey, this is so beautiful! Can I hold it? Look at that beautiful winter sign we have for the end of the card scene. I see where she's going with it. She's I mean, cutting a little bit out of time. So she doesn't cut too much. Yeah. We're doing the excellent black jack sign. That says Exponent Blackjack with 10 to the power of 2. My favorite part of the music video was creating the um, Exponent Blackjack sign. I think it should just be like this because it's like a simple, it shouldn't be like a, like, 
Well, yeah. because the thing is, the rule, the rule when you're like doing anything in video, I don't care if you're in commercial work, if you're doing a music video, whatever you have, it has to read within a second yeah. or two seconds. If you have something that is visually confusing, then it is harder for the audience to absorb it because they have to hear the music, they've got to hear the lyrics, and then they're also trying to read what's on the background. So I love this design. I love. I love how you've kind of decided that, that the clean yes. one may be better. Yeah. But this is what I love about the drawing, is all these other elements that you have here, is everything that is not part of the actual logo, those are considered design elements. And so I love the element of using base numbers and exponents. The face mask project was we had to design a mask that the marionette dolls would wear mm -hmm. so that they would look like real life marionette dolls. The face masks were too big for them so it looked a little awkward. We decided to use the face masks as a design element on the respect the power wall in the dance club scene. And what was your role in the video? Create a dance that demonstrates the process of writing a base number with an exponent and expanded form. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be so hard. Sky told us to do 9 to the power of We are working on the expanded form dance. So we start and then it goes, I'll make you grow and we all come over except for the person. And Here. We, and now everybody will stay behind one another so it looks like only one person. Until and then the next cue. Guys, remember, little number, shoulder, big. Have we agreed on the big, big base and it's big base number? Uh, big, big, big base, base and big, big base number. number. We need some space. Wait, what? yeah, we need space. Yeah. Can you guys do a video from over there? No, guys, movie? I'm sorry. I'm so confused. No, what the heck are we doing? Okay. Um, so I'm here, and then I go times, and then you come out. And then when you, you can have it, even regardless, she even the like curtains go at least from here to here. Whoever's the I have no problem with that. It's whatever you want to do. Like but if you have basically four feet to the left to the right, so we have then that. I'll make you grow. Don't you know I'm exponential? And then you'll be behind her. You'll be really here. And then I've got the power. Where's and you the have the side. Where's the side? Where's the side? Where's the side? The most challenging part for me was singing on pitch to the song. But after a while, it turned really easy because of Miss MacGyver helping us a lot. Well, the most challenging part was probably having to learn it and then having to memorize it because I don't, because it's like one of the first full, full length songs I've had to memorize before. I think I'm a better player than when I started with the music video now than it was before because I put a lot of practice into it and it got better and better. The biggest challenge for the video was since Ms. McIver wrote everything but the drums because she thought I was such a good drummer and that she trusted me to write what I thought was going to fit best myself. So that was kind of hard because every night I would go home trying to think of new diff or different drum fills to try to put into different spots that I thought needed it. She told me that at the end she wanted me to do a two, uh, like a bar of a, just a drum fill at the end. And so I had to think of how many beats per drum to make it fit and when to end it and what to hit and everything. So that was a pretty good challenge and I enjoyed it. I felt like the my favorite thing was being, being able to jam with all my, a bunch of my friends and my teacher mm -hmm. and I felt like that was just really special because I don't usually get to jam in school with a teacher and a bunch of friends. 
The most challenging part of um, doing the music video for me was playing to the camera because I'm really shy and that was kind of hard. Um, my favorite part of the music video was when I was doing the, because I was the puppet, puppet master and we were doing the marionette scene outside. <laughs> Um, of the school year was when Ms. McIver's son came in from Level 11 Studios and we were doing the audio recordings for the instruments and just setting up the whole studio. Nicole, you ready back there? Uh -huh. Is my set ready? You guys are ready? Right. My favorite part of the music video was when the recording because it was so cool and such a cool experience because they brought in all the special drum set and then they took all the uh, microphones and wires and hooked them up all around the drum set so that was a really cool opportunity for me and I really enjoyed it. I was also very excited about doing it. I practiced a lot the night before uh -huh. up to about three hours mm -hmm. and I just kept on rehearsing trying to work until I didn't until I didn't get it wrong. Well, my favorite part of school year was actually was actually recently we did a recording shoot because that was very exciting for me because I got hands-on experience with the spotlight and how to hold the spotlight in ways to make it a nice round spotlight shape. So we used some white paper, taped it, so it would be a nice oval circle shape. Um, Level 11 Studios provided me that experience and I am really thankful for that experience. And hopefully that will help me maybe pursue a career in writing. On writing down the item, the vendor, the quantity, and cost per unit in total for everything, all the supplies we need. Hi, um, I'm just making sure all these calculations are right, I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, I already turned them into the acquisition team, so yeah, I'm done for now, so I'm just going to wait. We need to work in the acquisition part. Valeria, this is too much. We always... Um, we're multiplying, adding, subtracting decimals a lot during practices. That was one of our big jobs. Well, the challenges that we had were that um, sometimes we would get our answers wrong while adding the money so we could get an accurate price. So we had to start over the whole entire process so we could get the most accurate price. The most challenging part of all the projects, for me, for the backdrops, it was getting the, pre the precise measure of how long it was supposed to be. And that did take us some time because sometimes we were off by a few. And also, every time we would cut, almost every time actually, sometimes the middle and one side would be perfect, but then one side would be a little too behind or too far ahead. So we would, we would be like, oh my gosh, now we have to remeasure. So every time we, we measured, we would get it right. So measure twice, cut once. Now you measured that at six foot nine inches, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, let me put double check with Miss McIver, make sure that's exactly the amount. I got the wrong one. Okay, we the thing that we hope to accomplish the most is to get these to be the symbols that bring down the expression, which is probably going to be the most challenging part. We're doing the top, the top part of the curtain for the high wall facade. It's really hard because we have to measure the door and um, we don't want to staple the twine. Or that the twine? Twine. Twine, that's okay. The, um, the curtain is kind of uneven, so sometimes to make sure that we don't staple it wrong or else it's going to like come back. And of course, it could put in No, we need to bring the R over because the W is almost all. And this is, we're going to glue the wires on. This board's going to be. Why do we have all these books on the floor? Because we were. Why didn't we clean it up? Um, there's going to be a silver drop back there, and once we go the letters on, this sign's going to go on the silver drop behind Andrew's drums. Mine, the hardest, I think, was when I was doing with Juan, the measurements for the actual facade, for the fake wall over there, and um, it was a lot of work to convert all of those into yards for the bulletin curtains. It was also really hard to measure the 
the height because there, if we try to do it, we would get the tape measure stuck inside one of the, like the panels. Mm -hmm. So it would be really hard to try to get it out, but we did. Well, we had to get the measurements from the engineering so we could buy the backdrops, and we had to get the colors that they wanted, and for the graphics design, we had to get all the materials that they needed. Staying under the $500 budget it was pretty hard in the beginning until we got donations, which was really helpful. Yeah, one person donated 300, over $300 to help us buy t-shirts for our cast and crew. We were able to buy um, metallic curtains for the rock band scene and laser lights. So how's the rook going to get captured? Um, the rook is going to be captured by the queen and really he doesn't have... Mm, any really good capture moves right now. Um, we have been doing the speed chess project. The exponent speed, speed chess. Project and we were supposed, our lesson goal was to design the, the, chess, the chess pieces to demonstrate the process of finding the value of a base number with an exponent in a game of speed chess. Once we're done with making the whole line down the middle, if he moves up here, it'll be an illegal move and he'll be and then I will be out. Oh, um, to so me, um, the hardest part for the, was getting the checkmate to be possible. The, the hardest part of the checkmate was probably making the queen perform, um, perform the checkmate. So. Okay, so I would go first with the knight right here, and then Thomas would go first and take my pawn. You mean go next? Go next and take my pawn. Mm -hmm. Then. I would go with my bishop and take this pawn. Uh -huh. be, Thomas would go next and, ta and take that spot. After nice. that, I would move my pawn over here. No, wait, no. Wrong. No, you have to... You have to move the queen. Yeah, the queen. Then I have to move the queen up here. Then I move my, my rook up here. Just to threaten the queen, because he wants to. And then, uh, ooh, my bad. After that, I you take my pawn that captures the bishop, and then Thomas does the last move with the get Yeah, gets the reason the he captures the bishop is to make the is to make the the black team seem like they might actually have a chance. Right, and then at this point he is in checkmate? Yes. Because of the knight, because if he moves up here, the knight would take him. If he moves diagonally, the rook would take him. If he moves the other way diagonally, the rook would take him. But if you, and if he moves here too, the rook would also take him. Yeah, because... Oh, the I see it, I see it. Right I here, it. Yes. There's, two way, um, there's two people attacking, the, the uh -huh. rook and the queen. So, really there's no, there's no possible escape. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to design a game for exponent blackjack, and we're gonna um, we have to make show what a certain number in an exponent means. Well, equals. What we need to figure out is how to play the game, like a legitimate game that actually legitimate. works. That's that's close to blackjack. So. We're gonna we're gonna deal everyone out a base number card, and then we're gonna deal them out um, um, an exponent card. This is just practice. We have four to the third power, and we have a little card here that says e equals four times f times four times four. That was, four. and so the dealer, which is me, passes out these cards, and the player, which is Sebastian, is going to have these cards. He's going to have a low card, but with maybe, I think, a big exponent, and he's, and he's going to, um, he's going to think it's not good, then he's going to think he lost, then he's saying, oh, this is an exponent, this is a higher card than the other players. Then he's gonna win, and then he's gonna, and then it's gonna go victory lap. And how 
how it basically works out because the music video is supposed to help kids that don't understand what what exponents are and how they work. So that's basically what we're that's basically what we're supposed to be doing with the card game. This was a facade that almost every team contributed in making. Um, from the design teams, the engineering teams, the acquisition team, everybody contributed to make this thing. Especially me. I came in early building this thing, and if I knock on it, it doesn't fall. So it's very sturdy. How did you make it so sturdy? Um, using a lot of support, such as using string attached to cabinets behind it, attached to the actual facade itself, um, yardsticks, uh, curtain rods, pretty much anything we could find that would work as a support. So tell me the number one thing that you want to tell me in case the battery dies. What's the most important thing to tell me? The most important thing. You always need a support no matter what you're building. If it's a bridge, a school, anything. You always need support. If you don't put a support, well, it's doomed. It's not going to stand for me. Maybe a day if you're lucky. But other than that, it would never stand. So what was your favorite part about being at this school or fifth grade or the music video? Making this thing. Making this facade. That was my favorite part of all fifth grade. Really? Yes. Wow. Well, you did an amazing, an amazing job on this. I am so impressed with you. Anything else you want to say? Stay in school, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> <laughs>
grow, don't you know I'm exponential? I've got the power. Power of